Hello, it's Angela, and welcome back to my channel, Literature Science Alliance. And today we're going into my April wrap up. I think it's April. Yes, it was for the Owls Readathon, and I did nine owls, and I only needed seven to become a professor, so that's great. I read 12 books, which is insane. I mean, two of them were novellas, so I feel like that matters, and one was an audiobook, but still really pleased and as always I will have timestamps down in the description below so you can hop to the books you care about my thoughts most on and let's just get into it because this is probably going to be a longer one than normal. The first book I read is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I gave this three stars. I do have a full review explaining my thoughts on it. The premise of this one is you have Gideon and Harrow. They are basically the two people in their generation at the House of Ninth. This is a necromancy house and they have to travel through space to go uncover a necromancy legacy slash secret with Harrow being the necromancer and Gideon being the swordswoman. And that's really kind of the plot. It's, um, it's a lot. It's on a lot of awards lists. If you're curious about it, I do think borrowing it from the library is not a waste of your time, but I would check out my review and other people's reviews to really know if it's worth your time, because it is a longer one. So that is... Gideon the Ninth. That didn't account for any owls. I don't know why, but I read it. <laughs> I was reading it for the booktube SFF Awards. And this next one I read was for my potions owl, and that is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. This is a message that was brought back to Earth from explorers in space about their travels, and they have a question for people on Earth after they read this story. It's 130 pages. I really thought this was a love letter to science. I really liked it. I thought it was a very comfortable writing style. I had a really good time the two days I read it. So I gave it four stars. And I think if you've been curious about Becky Chambers, because I know she's a name that gets passed around a lot in sci-fi, this is a good starting point. So is her Wayfair series, which starts with oh, the, the Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet. I think either one of those are good starting points. This is just a shorter book. So if you wanted a shorter one, I enjoyed it. And it was my potions book. The next thing I read is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. This was for charms because it's the white cover. See, all pretty. This is the sequel to Poppy War, which is a story about a girl named Rin who is from a very poor background. She's adopted and despite all the odds makes it into a prestigious military school and also finds out she has a knack for shamanism. So all that put together, she ends up in a war and basically the portion of this book takes place right after the first and I really liked where it went because there were some dark character moments in the first book. I really liked unpacking that in this one and the character development we got. I enjoyed the plot more in the first one, but I enjoyed the character development more in this one. It was a great sequel though, and I am so pumped for the third one come, uh, what is it? I think October? Regardless, if you haven't picked this up, you should, especially because when they are seeing this, it's Asian readathon, so you should for sure be picking up this wonderful epic adult fantasy if you think you're at all into a good war story. For the history of magic, I read Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is a standalone YA about a girl who spends her whole life taking care of grimoires in a library and one day is framed for a crime. And kind of the plot goes off from there. I gave this four stars, even though it might be more of a three and a half, I kind of waffle on it. But I really loved the characters and the character interactions, but I just thought the plot was flat for me. I didn't, I wasn't picking it up because of the plot. I kind of wish the plot gave us more chances to see the characters interact. That's what I wanted from this book. But I still think it's great and it's fun. It gave me Sabriel vibes if you've ever read the um, Garth Nix a YA adult series, wherever that is shelved at your stores. If you like that, I think you would like this one and I would recommend picking it up from the library. All right, so then I picked up The City We Became, which I have a review for, which you should know I've rated five stars, which is probably my favorite book of the year so far. So yeah, you should buy this and read it and tell me all about it. But the plot is New York is a city that's being born and as a part of that, the, there are different people that become boroughs of the city because New York City has five boroughs and they have to all figure out this new th part of their life, work together to stop the big bad. And it's a wonderful exploration of the city of New York and it's beautiful and I have a review and just just buy it. Just just read it, buy it. N.K. Jemisin's a fantasy goddess and I don't care. 
So after that really fun read, I ha I was finished up a nonfiction called Say Nothing. Um, there's more words. You'll see it on the screen. And this is by Patrick Keefe, I think is how you say his name. This is a story of the Troubles in Northern Ireland, which is a period where the IRA and the police slash British military are in a, essentially an unofficial civil war from the 60s to I think the early 2000s, maybe 90s. And it also, it looks into a very specific part, which is the murder of this mother and how there were these recordings and letters kept at Boston College that helped uncover what happened during these times. And it's a very fascinating read. I highly recommend getting to it on audiobook because I do find that if I had been reading this, it might have been very dry, but I thought it was very interesting. There were so many things I didn't know about, and I'm always all, I'm always in for learning new things, and we're going to be discussing it at my book club soon, so I'm glad I read it for that. Oh, that's also my Muggle Studies book because it's, it's Muggles. I mean, I don't think it could be more of a Muggle Studies book than a nonfiction about humans in Ireland, like muggles. My arithmancy book was Women Talking by Mariam Toes, and this is, whew, this is a hard read in many ways. This is a book about women in a Mennonite community talking about what they're going to do because the men of their village at night have been basically knocking them out and then violating their bodies. So trigger warnings for sexual assault and rape throughout all of this. You never get the graphic scenes, but it is a topic that is discussed. Now it's also hard because this is a very philosophical, conversation-driven story. It's only 200 pages, but it's very dense, and if you're reading it to get something from it, you're not going to fly through it. It's going to take time to dissect. It was wonderful for a book club. I am really glad I read it. It sparked fascinating discussion, but again, it's a hard read on many levels. Don't let its length fool you, because I think I did. I think I thought it would be a quick read, and it took me like five days. For Transfiguration, I read The Priory of the Orange Tree, which I also have a review up for this channel, because I'm just on my game this month, apparently. <laughs> and this I picked for Transfiguration, because someone said there was shape-shifting, and there's a tiny bit of shape-shifting, so I'm counting it. And this is a story where it's kind of a classic high fantasy story where you're going to have multiple point of view characters in a world that will all have to kind of come together, even though they're from different cultures and backgrounds, to fight a big bad. That's kind of the idea. You have Eid, who is a daughter of the Priory. You have a queen who is basically the symbol of their religion and how it will never be toppled down, that the bad thing can never come back. You have her weight there. You have Tanay, who is someone who has always dreamed of being a dragon rider in the East. You have so many characters. And I thought it was a really fun time. I thought it was a really quality story. Like, I don't know if I will be thinking about it years from now. Who knows? It's a standalone, so unless I want to reread it, I won't come back to this story. But I had a really fun time while I was reading it, and I was just so pleasantly surprised because I had no idea what I would get because everyone has such polarizing thoughts on this one. So even though at that point I have completed seven owls, I was like, well, I still have This Is How You Lose the Time War, which I still wanted to read for Booktube SFF because it's on the short list for short works. So I picked this one up for Care of Magical Creatures, and if you've not seen my vlog, I loved it. I, and it's, it's not a book that I would necessarily love because although it's weird and confusing, which is my thing, it's also very abstract and literally dense. But I I loved it. What these two authors did to capture a relationship between these two people was phenomenal. So what I'm saying is this book is about red and blue, who are these two agents for their respective futures. They're on different timelines, and they're on opposite ends of the time war. Basically, their futures are mutually exclusive. So they're always doing things to cancel out the other's work. And on the way, they started becoming pen pals. And then on the way, they start falling in love. And it's, uh, I just really enjoyed it. Now, don't go into this wanting very concise world building because I don't think you'll be satisfied. There is very lush world building, but it's not in a traditional sense. And honestly, I just feel like the emotions that were conveyed between these characters really resonated with me. And I just think if that doesn't resonate with you, you're not gonna like the book. It's just 
probably what it is, but it's also pretty short. So I think you'll know pretty early on if it'll be something your brain's cool with. But I was just happy that my brain was really happy with it because it was really good. And then continuing on my novella streak, I finally read The Deep by Rivers Solomon. This is like the only book that, well, no, Gideon and The City We Became are also books that I own, but I also own The Deep. I don't read many things I own because I don't own many books. And whoa, whoa. This book should have been nominated for the BookTube SFF short works, period. End of story. This book was phenomenal in so many ways. The Deep is about Yetu. She is a water-dwelling creature who is a descendant of pregnant women who are thrown overboard uh, from slave ships. Um, they have a name that's not mermaid, but you can picture a mermaid that's pretty similar to what they are. And she is the historian. She holds all the memories for her clan, tribe, community sort of thing. And it's about her burden having to hold all of these. It's about her sort of self-discovery about who she is. I don't know how this author piled so much world building and quality plot into 160 pages, but it was near perfection for me. Like, I don't think I would have wanted it longer. I don't think I would have wanted it shorter. I think it wasn't just good for a short book. I think this was great. I think it's wonderful. I think I will for sure reread it one day. I had a wonderful time with this story and I'm really glad I got to it. So I still had one more book that qualified for Owls, and that is A Man Called Uve, and this was for Herbology, because man is, starts with an M. And I really liked this one. It, it met my expectations. I wanted a nice, cozy-ish contemporary, like kind of like one of those movies you know that probably will make you have feelings, but they're the feelings you want. And this is a story about, you know, a grouchy widower who's trying to learn how to live a life without his wife. But what I will say that no one told me is definitely trigger warnings for suicidal ideation and attempts. And it's in this book. And I know that's important for some people to know before they read books. And I also don't know, and the reason why I gave it four instead of five stars, if that topic is handled with enough research in mind, I don't know how accurate its portrayal is, um, not having personal experience myself. But otherwise, I really loved the writing style again. Bachman really delivers with quality characters and plot. I, I love this cat. This cat's wonderful. So if you like Bachman, this is a great Bachman. I think I still like My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry More, but this one was wonderful and my mom should have just told me it had a cat in it that I would love and I would have read it four years ago instead of it waiting next to my bed forever. And. The last book I read, I'm putting on here, even though I technically finished the morning of May 1st, but I just don't care. My channel, my rules, and that's The Dragon Reborn, the third Wheel of Time book by Robert Jordan. This is my favorite book in this series. <sighs> I don't know how people explain The Wheel of Time. It is a classic high fantasy story where you're gonna have characters and they're gonna be in trouble and they gotta figure things out and there's gonna be magic and monsters and lots of plots. It's a 14 book series. You know what it is. There's going to be a TV show. If you are interested in it, there are lots of booktubers who put more time into it than I do. But I've been on this journey, and this one's my favorite. And if you're like me, who was like, the first two books were like three and a half. They're kind of like nothing special. I think this one's my favorite and really good, and it has me excited for the fourth book. That said, Jordan still does things as an author that I find really annoying. <laughs> but I think, I guess, if I dig into any author, I would find those things. And it was really fun to buddy read, so I know Jade at Bedtime Book Word mentioned this in her buddy reads babbles recently, but yeah, buddy reading The Wheel of Time is really clutch because say you don't remember the name of the 100th character you've seen and where why they're important, you can ask a friend to help you instead of accidentally maybe finding spoilers on the internet. Also, shout out to the Wheel of Time community like Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and everyone else who, when I have a question, they will respond and it's just... It's a good community. That That is the best part about the book is that at least the people I've interacted with in the community are very welcoming. They're not gatekeeping. They just want you to love the book. And that's the best type of community. So yeah, that's it. Those are all the books. Those are all 12 of them. I did it. So yeah, what did you read? What was your favorite read or most disappointing read, biggest surprise, any of those that you had in April? 
I'd love to hear about it. Maybe add something to my Goodreads want to read list. Otherwise, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more of this. And I just hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.